Stretching to the horizon, awe-inspiring vastness as far as the eye can see. Our northern state forests. Governor Knowles, Cooley Experimental Forest, Brule River, Flambeau River, Black River, Northern Highland American Legion, Governor Earl Peshtigo River. However, these forests didn't always exist as we see them today. I think a good portion of the lumber barons moving in thought was an inexhaustible resource to be exploited and not necessarily managed for the future. There was so much slash piles and dead wood from the cutover that a lot of the areas just burned for decades. The common belief was that the plow would follow the axe, that burned over barren land would become pasture for herds of cattle and plowed for farming. But there was a problem. The climate is not conducive to farming. We have long winters, short summer, short growing season. The soil is really sandy. It's hard to grow any crops. With great swaths all but worthless, the state's first forester, E.M. Griffith, oversaw a bold plan to sow and grow 192,000 seedlings. Forestry as a science was a new concept in the United States, and they used that first plantation as a study site. It was a grand two-acre experiment. Half was left alone. Trees just feet away on the other half were numbered. Every time it was thin, foresters would mark the worst trees to have come out and let the best trees grow into the future. You can harvest and utilize products and still have a beautiful forest, aesthetically pleasing and beneficial to wildlife. Armed with that knowledge, the government in the 1930s dispatched hundreds of young men of the Civilian Conservation Corps to get wildfires finally under control and then replant the northern woods. We still are reaping the benefits of a lot of what they took on back then. <laughs>